This video is not about reading. I just want every hockey player now to have a book. If you don't know anything about hockey, the one thing you should know is that hockey players will literally just keep playing hockey. What's up friends? Welcome back to another video. Welcome if you're new here and welcome back if you are a returning subscriber. In a time of stress, I made a live talking about what I was feeling with my channel. I like to be very transparent when I am dealing with things and just talking about how I'm feeling content wise and just about my channel and I feel like it's fine to vent about frustrations and I just like being honest. So this whole week I am going to take a break from my channel kind of. <laughs> I still want to film and I said in the video like oh do I quit or do I just take a break and I was just super stressed in that moment. Whenever I have these thoughts all I can think about is well what am I going to do then? Like I have this camera, I have my audio equipment and all because I like filming. Like that's my favorite part of YouTube is filming and I've always loved it. Honestly since I was a kid I've always filmed things. Not filming just feels wrong and makes me uncomfortable because I'm like well what am I going to do? But I think it's also valid to talk about my frustrations with my channel and channel growth because I think that it's not a negative thing but YouTube can really affect and play on your mental health. So I'm taking a mental health break this week but I'm going to still film because I want to and I'm not going to stop myself from doing that because it's fun. So self-care for me is filming. So I hate being the YouTuber who says well you've seen the title but you've seen the title and last night I was watching a bunch of videos where booktubers swapped their screen time on their phone with reading time. When I come back to my channel I'm going to change things around where I don't force myself to read and not to read so much. I think there's a booktube culture where everybody just reads so much and that's totally fine if that's who you are. I think unintentionally it can be a lot of pressure and I know a lot of creators have talked about this. Bear has a whole video talking about how production is taking over their life and reading isn't fun anymore so I will link that down below if you would like to watch it but I am just going to read like a normal person I guess. Um, I'm just not going to pressure myself to read. I talked about this in my slow reader book tag where I say reading is not my main hobby. I have a lot of other interests than reading and I think that for booktube a lot of people their main interest is reading and that's totally fine but I have a lot of other interests which is why a lot of my content reflects what I'm interested in and I love that about my channel. So I am just going to not force myself to read. I am not going to have my goal of 100 books this year. I am just scrapping that and I might not even have a goal. I've been thinking about this a lot where I wish that I didn't have to always pick up a book. I feel like there's also a part of the booktube culture where everybody is just always reading. I think when I first started my channel I really was just interested in music, hockey, and reading and I took my main interest at the time which was reading and I made a whole channel about it. I really love filming and that is one thing that just takes me back from ever quitting my channel and I talked about this in my video at the beginning of the year which you can watch up here if you would like to. I learned in my up all night vlog that I love to just document one book. My sims video was really fun as well so I think when I come back to my channel I am just going to switch it up and read one book a video. I think that this concept works for some people to read like three or four books a vlog but it was causing me so much stress that I don't want to do that because I just don't want to do that. So I don't want YouTube to be stressful anymore <laughs> basically like I know it's going to come with some stressors but I am going to just eliminate the stress in my life and just feel a lot better about myself and my channel because I don't want to stop. You really cannot get rid of me that easy. <laughs> I think it's still good to just reflect on what stress is in my life and what I could just eliminate to make my life easier. This video is not about reading. It is about me trying to 
just not go on my phone as much and to actually go on a social media break, but my only exceptions are going to be obviously entertainment purposes, going on YouTube, going on Twitch. I'm not going to be deleting my social media apps, that's what I usually do. So let's look at my phone and I'll talk more about what my goal is for this video because it's not just reading. So I don't really go on my phone that much, but the daily average says two hours and 23 minutes. The app I use the most is Instagram. Oh my god, Leo is biting my feet and that is not very nice. I mainly use it as a messaging app, but I also use it for entertainment purposes and just to watch people's stories, to get some book recommendations. And so that is my justification for Instagram. So the goal of this video is not to read more, it is just to actually have a social media break. The point of this video is not to be antisocial, so I am going to only use my social apps to message people and to talk to my friends. So YouTube is like a part of my day. So I am not going to be cutting out any of that entertainment, but I am just focusing more on taking a social media break and actually taking a break. So I'm not going to be focusing more on reading, but I would like to get some reading done and I am in the middle of Camp NaNoWriMo. So I also incorporate some of that. So I actually have a fun week planned out for myself. I think I'm gonna go into the city if the weather permits and I am finally going to go to a cafe and write. That's what I've been wanting to do since the pandemic. So now since I'm fully vaccinated, I'm going to do that. Since I'm taking a break from posting, I am going to just be making a full writing vlog. So it'll just be one video. So speaking of writing, I am currently reading Max Domi's memoir, No Days Off. He's an NHL player who happens to have type 1 diabetes and this is all about that and I am reading this for my work in progress that I'm revising. It is a trans hockey book featuring a trans main character who is a hockey player. It is a YA contemporary and one of my side characters has type 1 diabetes and so I'm reading this for research purposes and it is 11 o'clock in the morning and I woke up at 8 so I went right outside and I started this video but this is the intro so I already ended up reading about 30 pages today I think so this morning I read for an hour and so I have an hour and 23 minutes left of reading for the day and this is so educational and I'm really enjoying it. It's fascinating to me in the terms of I'm just learning a lot and when I want to learn about something I go all in and I am just very fascinated and this is going to help me so much with my book because one of my side characters has type 1 diabetes and I just want to get it right and do as much research as I can. So. I ended up reading 30 pages today. I made some breakfast and I also read during that. So I have an hour and 23 minutes left of reading for the day, but I am going to check my email, respond to some comments, and just do some stuff before I get back to reading because this video is not strictly about reading, but I would like to get this done and I think I'm going to read some of the Pocket Change Collective. Penguin Teen kindly sent me the whole Pocket Change Collective, so shout out to them because I love this. I've been saying how I wish there was a whole box set and so I basically have the box set. So it includes my favorite book of the year, Escape for Your Life. I was able to read two of the collections from NetGalley thanks to Penguin Teen and they ended up sending me all of them. So I wouldn't mind rereading these, but I do want to get to some of the other ones that I have not read yet. So we'll see. I was just going to say maybe I'll put a poll on Instagram, but no, I'm not doing that. Um, my only other exception is that on Wednesday I have to post something because a ball night comes out that day and I took a picture and I want to post it. So that is my only other exception for going on Instagram at all is messaging and just to post that. So I'm going to go and do some work, check my email, and I will be back. Hello, it is Wednesday. It is 9.18. And yesterday I didn't update because I just had a crazy day, a good day actually. I had um, some good things happen, which was nice. And I didn't really read that much. 
Yesterday, I planned to go to the city. The weather was looking like rain, so I just decided not to do it. It didn't rain, but it was cloudy, so I thought that I would just go on Thursday. I've been wanting to do it for the last two years. I haven't been back since because they were closing and there was like some stuff that was happening, but now they're reopened and I'm very excited. So we'll be doing that tomorrow, but let's talk about the book really quick and then I'll tell you my plans for today. I'm 100 pages in and I'm really enjoying it. And I just like hearing about Max's life leading up to the NHL draft. I'm right at the chapter where it's the NHL draft. And I'm learning a lot because he's talking about how you basically have meetings with the GMs. And I guess like an interview with them. It's called the NHL Combine. He talks about how he didn't really understand his diabetes as a kid. He was diagnosed at 12 years old. And how he just kind of like neglected it. And just thought it was not a big deal. But... As he was doing that, he realized how big of a deal it actually is. And he talks about diabetes being his strength, but also his weakness. And he talks about just some of the complications and how it is a deadly disease. And how sometimes if you do the wrong thing, something bad can really happen. And I just like learning about both sides of it. But also how your blood sugar lowers while you're playing sports. And how he has to take like 10 minute breaks. That's some information that I really wanted to know. Because I really just wanted to know how is my player going to play with the diabetes? Like how does it affect him and his game? So I really like that. But it's interesting just to see a perspective from an NHL player. However, he is just so privileged because his dad played in the NHL. So he is just talking about how he got to meet Wayne Gretzky. He got to meet um, Bobby Clark. He got to meet Mario Lemieux. <laughs> this is just Leo's show, okay? This is not my show anymore. In my writing vlog, I said Leo loves balloons, and here it is confirmed. So I'm really enjoying it. I am now at the chapter where he got a tattoo of the type 1 diabetes medical bracelet, which was cool and made me think to add that to my character. And he says that he has to take it off for practice. So he got a tattoo of it so that he wouldn't have to wear it anymore. <laughs> Let's look at my screen time. I posted my Instagram picture yesterday for up all night. And Instagram says 38 minutes I spent on there. I had something cool happen yesterday, so I was talking to my friends about it. And so I was on Instagram a little bit more yesterday, but I'm hoping not to be on it too much today, aside from just like messaging. So today's plan is to read, go to a cafe, and also go to the empanada place in my town. It is handmade, so I'm excited to do that. And so that is my plan for the day. And I will see you probably when I go to the cafe. So now we're going to your bedroom. Don't you think we're moving too soon? I love to hear you when you complain about your best friend, how she's so late. And as you're talking, I start thinking. All the details start to sink in But I don't care about that right now I Spend the summer in this beach house Cause I will try to play my part My lies, memories
9 o'clock at night, I think. Maybe it's even 10. And what a day I had. I had a fun day. I went to the cafe and I didn't realize that they closed at 2 o'clock and I went at a 1. So that was fun. I got my coffee and I was like, oh, can I like go sit over there because of COVID? Some places you can't go and sit down. And she was like, yeah, but uh, we're closing at two o'clock, so you only have an hour. So guess what? I just realized as well that I did not write any words today, which is totally fine because I've been going over my word count, so I'm fine. Um, I'm at like 15,646 words or something like that. And perfect timing to talk about writing because I am almost finished with Max Domi's book. I went to the cafe, got my coffee, I got like a caramel cold brew, I think, and then I walked all the way to the empanada place. And so today I have walked 2.5 miles, which was fine because I really have not gotten to walk places in a while. Like when I lived in the city, I used to walk a lot, but because of COVID, um, I just don't really do that anymore. And during heat wave, I absolutely don't want to do that. So tomorrow will be fun um, because it's supposed to be like 90 or 91 tomorrow. So that'll be a fun time. Um, but the empanada place was great. I got a cheesesteak empanada. It was awesome. And I could literally get 12 of them. They were so good. And the place like just opened up this year. But the only problem is that they open on Wednesdays. And like, I don't want to go Wednesday. I want to go Monday or Tuesday. But the empanadas are so good and the place is so cool. I loved like sitting outside and all. It was just such a fun time. Since I couldn't write there, I just read. So I read at the cafe and then I also read at the empanada place. And move over Wayne Simmons. Max Domi is my new favorite hockey player. <laughs> Wayne Simmons is my favorite hockey player that I even have his doll. Name a more dedicated fan. I'll wait. I think Max Domi is now my second favorite hockey player. Wayne Simmons obviously is always my first. And all I can think of is that if Wayne Simmons wants to write a book, he should because I will be first in line buying it. I just want a Wayne Simmons book. Like, I just want every hockey player now to have a book. And I think I'm going to do a part two of this video or maybe just like a companion video where I actually read hockey players books. So I think that'll be really fun because I have some that I want to read and I put a whole list together. That's basically what I was doing this morning and yesterday. Um, but Max Domi is such a cool guy and just retract all of these statements that I said in the previous clip because as much as he has so much privilege because his dad was literally an NHL player and not many people get to talk to Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux and like all of that stuff, like not many people are getting advice from them. So that is his privilege, but he also has fought so hard to get into the NHL and he talks about how hard it is. Max's character development in this book is so good because he can be so cocky and at times he is just getting so much pushback and he's really learning that because of the privilege he has, he's really not getting a lot of advantages. He was sent back to the OHL like three times after he was drafted into the NHL. So after you're drafted into the NHL, either you are on their AHL team or you are making it to the NHL. You're getting your NHL debut probably in preseason games. So Max went into training thinking that he was going to make it to the NHL and our boy was cocky and he was sent back three times because his coach was like, no, you need to learn, you need to be more mature. And then he finally realized on like the third time, third time's a charm, that he was being cocky and he needed to step up and he really needed to balance his health and realize how severe it was. He had so many near-death experiences because he was not taking his health seriously. There were so many just mishaps where he would fall asleep, he wouldn't eat, 
and I was always like, bro, get an alarm. Like, where is your alarm at? Because, like, someone wake this guy up. Like, he just kept falling asleep. And I just really like to see his progression. I know so much more about him than I did previously. The two things I knew were that he was on the Canadians and also that he had diabetes. So, those were, like, the only things I knew about him, mainly because he's not associated with my team. However, I was really surprised to find out that he actually technically played a a flyer not in the NHL but it was the Don Mills Flyers and he wore jersey number 16 to tribute Bobby Clark who is a former flyer and he also has type 1 diabetes. I think him and Max are like the only NHL players to play with type 1 diabetes. They're the only two I know of and kind of the only two that really are talked about and I love how Max talks about him and he got to meet him and it was great and I just love when there's some Flyers knowledge. He was friends with Scott Lawton who is one of my favorite players. He's awesome. I love him and I love this. <laughs> this book is so good. You can tell that I am liking it. I'm not going to give it a review because it is a memoir and it's also for my own research so it's not like a book that I want to review or feel that I should review. I like it. If you like Max Domi, I think you should pick it up and I'm going to spend the rest of the night reading it because I want to read the rest and Max Domi is now one of my new favorite players <laughs> and I love him and he is actually a center just like my character who does have type 1 diabetes and I can't remember if I did that on purpose or not but let's just say that it was a coincidence. <laughs> I really like how Max does touch on the ableism in the NHL. I talk about it a lot like if you follow me on Twitter that's usually where I talk about hockey but there is so much ableism it's fucking disgusting. I should finish reading this book because I want to and hopefully I'll get some words in today for NaNoWriMo but we'll see what happens. So tomorrow is gonna be really fun because hopefully if the weather permits I'm gonna go to the hammock park. I am so excited and I just hope it doesn't rain and I just hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> Let's recap. I finished two books today. Max Domi's memoir I finished this morning when I was waiting for the train to go into the city. It was awesome and I just can't wait to get back into my book. So really enjoyed it. I am not reading it just because it's a research book. It's not really a book that I feel comfortable reading but 
But I do recommend this if you're a hockey fan and looking to read more nonfiction because we don't really have that many. Um, but I am looking forward to doing a whole video on that. So if you want to see that video, hit subscribe and turn on my bell notifications. That helps me out so much and helps you to see every video that I post. And when I was going to the city and as I was at the hammock park, I read and finished taking on a queer conscience. And I'm going to be doing a whole video about L LGBTQ plus nonfiction you can read. I'm going to feature this one because it was awesome and I think that this is required reading for everybody. I would give it a four and a half out of five stars. I thought it was so solid. There were so many great points in here. Adam Eli is Jewish and queer. Specifically, he says he's gay but also identifies with the term queer. He talks a lot about queer hate crimes, especially to other marginalizations. He talks about anti-Semitism. He talks about Islamophobia and he talks talks about it all basically but this is like a brief introduction and kind of like a guide of like how queer people can do better. This is a great guide if you are looking to start being a queer activist and you just want to know how you can help queer people in your community so I will have a link down below if you would like to pick this up or try and request it at your library. Um, besides the two I've already read this definitely is one of my favorites as well and I am currently reading Taking on the Plasex Crisis by Hannah Testa and she is a sustainability advocate and this is just her explaining the plastics crisis and basically what we need to do to stop climate change and have a healthier world. So I'm excited to read the rest of this but I am going to reconvene later when my phone is done charging. Look up my screen time and I'm going to end this video just because I feel like I'm finished with it. I think I've done what I've wanted to do. I had a lot of fun today. It was so hot and I just think that today was not the best day to be walking to the city. I walked 2.5 miles in the heat and I just don't recommend that at all. But overall I had a lot of fun today. This is something that I wouldn't normally do. I really have not left the house since the pandemic. So so this was my first time actually going out and it was actually really hard for me. I have a lot of anxiety and I don't really talk about that a lot on this channel. I talked about it like the beginning of my channel but then I just didn't really. My anxiety really tested me today. I am diagnosed with social anxiety and generalized anxiety and it was definitely playing with me today because I have really not been out of the house. Like this was the first time I've been out of the house since the pandemic. Like actually gone and done Done something for myself. I lived in the city for two years in college and I am used to being in the city but I have not been there in a whole year so all of the progress I've made on my anxiety has just went down the toilet. It is gone and it was really testing me today. Um, before the pandemic I have gone places alone before like I go to the movies alone, I go to concerts alone, I have fun like just doing that. It has just been such a long time since I've gone outside and actually done things so it was just a lot for me. I am very proud of myself for doing this because I really wanted to do it and I had a good time. I think it was just so hot out that today was just not like the ideal day to do it. I should definitely do it when it's like 70 degrees out and it's not scorching hot outside and I'm not walking in the heat. Like I don't know why I did that. It was horrible. I don't recommend to do that um, but my anxiety was being tested so much today. I am afraid of heights and I was so scared to get onto the hammock but I did it and I had a good time. It was fun despite the fact that I was so nervous the whole time that I was going to fall and crack my head open because I was like I'm alone and like I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> but that didn't happen. It was fine. It's just that I do get anxiety like that and it is horrible but I was able to have the tacos that I wanted but I think it was just so hot for them. It was a fun time just reading there. It was very peaceful and chill besides the fact that it was the city and there were city noises which I was fine with but for the most part it was fun and I had a rainbow hammock and it was really fun and I'm glad I did it because I really tested my anxiety and I'm proud of myself. So I finished Max Domi's book today and I read The New Queer Conscience which was really good so I had a pretty good reading day today and I will wrap up later. Bye.
One week later. It has been a whole week since I have updated you, so let's close out this video, talk about what my screen time is like because I've been editing this video and it's almost 40 minutes long, so I'm hoping I can cut it down a little bit, but that's what we're working with right now. So I did get some reading done in this video, even though I didn't plan for this to be a whole reading video, but I think I did a pretty good job and I would actually do this again, just in general, not even just filming, because I thought it was really therapeutic to just have a little bit of a break. I think that since the pandemic, everyone has really just been on their phones and sometimes social media can cause a lot of anxiety for myself, especially. So I think I'm going to do this video on my own. So I actually ended up DNFing tackling the plastics crisis at page 52 and I'll have a review down below explaining why. Basically, I just felt like some of her points were very ableist. The whole conversation around plastic use and being more sustainable and just eliminating plastics in general is very ableist and it is very classist. And I just thought that she could have had better points and could have actually backed up her points and talked about all of that. But you can read my review down below if you wanna see more. And I actually did pretty well. It said my daily average was an hour and 29 minutes and it was 58% down from last week. So I think I did pretty well with this video and I would do it again, even not for a video, just for myself. I get a lot of anxiety being on social media. So I think taking a social media break is very therapeutic. So I'm going to definitely try this out in the future when I'm feeling very stressed. I love the concept of this video. It was really fun to make and I had a lot of fun during the week and went places that are normally wouldn't because usually I'm just in my house stuck inside. So I had a lot of fun and hoping to do more things like this in the future. That is it for me today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you're new here or just check if you are unsubscribed because YouTube has been doing that. If you would like to support the channel, I'll have links down below for where you can buy the books and I will just earn a small commission. So if you'd like to help out the channel and do that, I would really appreciate it. And I also have a Patreon if you would like to support me there for only one dollar where I have extra bonus content like this and I have a private discord where all of my patrons who are paperback pals talk and every Thursday we do a game night and every first Saturday of the month we do a watch party in August, we're going to be doing a triple feature where we watch High School Musical 1, 2, and 3. So if you're interested in that and interested in meeting new paperback pals and more people in my community, you can pledge $1 a month to become a paperback pal and you will get to actually see other videos from me, including my childhood book series. Thank you all for watching. If you stayed till the end, comment down below your favorite part of this video. If it was me gushing about hockey or if it was me going to the hammock park, let's talk in the comments. I would love to know what your favorite part of the video was. I'm going to start uploading on Mondays and Saturdays. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're having a great day and staying safe and I will see you on Monday. Bye.